Today I'm going to be discussing GPI and GDP with the favor of GPI, and these two are some of the largest indicators of wealth that we currently have. America is currently using GDP, as you would all know, to determine wealth and has influenced many other nations to follow suit. While GPI is an alternative that's kind of gaining traction since it is trying to prove wealth in a better way than GDP does. Now, a bit of economics review. The, there are the three circles, which is manufactured capital and financial capital is kind of smushed into one. You have social capital and human capital smushed into one, and you have natural capital. And these three things really affect how economics works. Now, I've had several classes that have been going over this material, and it's made me realize just how important these things are. Uh, I also hope that every one of you will be able to form your own opinion of this and go and do your own research and discuss about the two topics. But I will start with GDP, or gross domestic, gross domestic product. Now, Investopedia has GDP defined as it equaling C plus I plus G plus NX, with C for consumption, I for an investment, G for government spending, and, X, and NX for total exports. Now, all of these can be positive or negative values, just depending on what year. Say one year you have more exports, and then one year you have less exports. That would help create a flux. And since we know what it now lets us use, we can see which capital it really focuses on. And it, we can also, which, for GDP, it really focuses on that financial manufactured capital. And leaves out the other two for the most part. And America's GDP has gone up dramatically, dramatically over the last couple of decades, especially compared to other nations. And even with success, though, there is some call for change. Like for instance, from the New York Times, almost a century later, it is time for a new set of statistics. It is time for measures that do a better job of capturing the realities of modern American life. And with that, I will be going on to GPI, which stands for Genuine Progress Indicator. It measures much more than GDP. Rather than just having manufacturing and financial capital, it has, also has human capital and natural capital. It accounts for crime, pollution, home, housework, and keeps on going on, but I don't really have time to go over it all. But this is also from Investopedia. Uh, and having all three means that it also has heavy humanitarian and sustainability focuses, which you said all said that you would, um, cared about the environment a lot and you also cared about humans a lot. It, some of the ways that it focuses in sustainability is in one, it has several ways of focus on sustainability, and one of those ways is from Dr. Grabowski, the head of sustainability here at Taylor. And that is that he take a small country and you, you put it in a situation. For this one, I'm using Puerto Rico. And so it has a pretty small GDP, but this huge natural capital, or natural capita, but it wants to grow its GDP because of the fact it wants to be considered a wealthy nation and wants to have money. So it creates a lumber industry to start cutting down the rainforest to be able to export lumber. So say after about 25 years, you have GDP go rise up but then you also have your natural resources go down quite a bit. Say another 25 years, your GDP is all like huge, it's enormous, but your natural resources is almost completely gone. Now, what does this mean? This means that the lumber that you currently are exporting, it's almost all gone. So you, either your economy is gonna collapse or you gotta find something else to industrialize and in export to keep your GDP up. Now, GDP is completely different from that. Instead of going up when natural capital goes down because it's what you're using to make money, it actually also starts going down because you're losing the sustainability of having a renewable resource just that you can use over and over and over again instead of trying to repair it. Also with GDP, GPI, it has a lot better take on pollution. While GDP mainly is positive as it really only cares about making and selling things, GPI cancels out the pros and cons of pollution versus manufacturing, which with the pollution being able to harm the human population and biodiversity. GPI also has a lot more care for humanitarian efforts. Since volunteering and education are both positives on this, it means that say a missionary goes to another country and teaches somebody. Well, it's helping the missionary's country because you're volunteering. But since you're educating people, 
and having educated people is always a great thing to have. It helps developing countries have more wealth because they have more educated people. Now, crime is a negative to the GPI, and you'd be like, duh, crime is bad. Well, GDP actually tends to measure crime as a good thing because of the sales of medicine and legal fees. And one of the, the third thing is, is it measures happiness in a way. Now, you would be right in saying that money cannot buy you happiness, which is true, but it measures leisure. And it's, typically, leisure comes with having more wealth, and when you have more leisure time, you do things you enjoy a lot more. But there's also a lot of biblical values that can be tied into this. Wait, don't nothing. I would like to draw your attention to the current systems. The story of stuff, uh, as this is how the story of stuff puts our current system. And most textbooks would agree with this. It consists of natural resources, manufacturing, distribution, consumption, dispo and disposal. This system puts a lar large emphasis on buying products like for where this golden arrow is, and this is how the GDP grows, is from the buying of products, hence a golden arrow. But this is flawed. It's a linear system, but with a finite resource. Much like Costa Rica, it starts to dwindle. So a story suggestion is to remove dispersal and just make a loop. So you can have a loop that keeps, keeps the resources at a good level, while still managing to grow your economy. And now there are is quite a few biblical connections such as sustainability with Psalms 24, one through two. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. For he laid the earth's foundation on the sea, seas and built upon its ocean, ocean steps. And this reminds us that we do not own the earth. It is not necessarily ours to do whatever we please with it because God owns it. Another thing is humanitarianism. And one of the most famous examples is John 15, 12. This is my commandment, love each other in the same way I have loved you. And Proverbs 21, 13. Those who shut, off, who shut their ears to the cries of the poor will be ignored in their own time of need. Along with Philippians 2, 4. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. And a quick reminder from Ecclesiastes 5, 10. Those who love money will never have enough. How meaningless to think that wealth brings true happiness. This is something that GDP tends to fall for, since it really mainly cares about producing money and financial capita. It, tends to, it tries to say that happiness is determined by how wealthy a country is. Now, having a high GPI over a GDP would favor, would force higher powers like industry rather than individuals to take greater care in how they're acting. And America's GDP versus GPI since 1960 has also changed quite a bit. G you can tell that GDP has grown drastically, but GPI is just kind of flatlined, which shows how much GDP is ignoring. Now that I've recovered everything I can, I encourage you to go and do your own research. Maybe watch the story stuff. It's only about 20 minutes long, but most importantly, have discussions.